Welcome everyone to Tip Off Sports. My name is Nick Zeffi and today we have a very special guest all the way from Drake University, 6'5 guard Okai Jamgoose, considered one of the top shooters in Canada. Also was a, the fifth ranked player in his class, uh, according to North Pole Hoops. Um, Okai, how's it going, man? How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me on here. Definitely, definitely. How I like to refer to him is Turkish Delights, uh, with the Turkish background. Always been one of the uh, elite players. Uh, so, Okai, let's dive right into it, man. How, how has this whole COVID situation been like for you? I know you probably got home a lot sooner than you were thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, it cut our season, the NCAA season short, so I was able to come home. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be this long. I just thought I was going to be here for maybe two, three weeks, um, but it, it ended up being longer. Um, so it, it's been good, though. It's, I've just been training. Um, my training schedule, like my daily schedule has changed a lot since, since I came here um, with the resources that I've been able to secure, obviously, with things shutting down uh, or opening up. Um, when I first came here, I was pretty much in my room. Nothing was open. All the nests outside were taken down. Um, so I had to quarantine for two weeks. But as soon as that was done, I just started doing a lot of ball handling with all the nests taken down um, two, three hours with my little brother in the basement. We made up our own drills, uh, things like that. We're on the home court app. I don't know if you about, heard about the home court app, but we've been on that, um, just competing against our own personal records and trying to compete against ourselves. Um, but aside from that, I've been doing a lot of band work um, when I didn't have weights. Um, so I was just doing a lot of um, strength with that. Also, my pull-up bar and a lot of conditioning. I used to run a few kilometers per day. Um, and, and I watched a lot of film, too. So that really helped just seeing the game from a different perspective, really breaking down everything down. Um, and then once the outdoor nets came, I started uh, training over there. Um, but right now, right now I'm pretty much, um, pretty much more stable um, in the sense that I wake up in the morning um, me and my little brother go outside. We do a bunch of skill work um, with a lot of floaters, finishing, um, touch around the basket, and we shoot a lot and just perfect our form. And then I work out with Eric Matias three times a week. Um, he's one of the best uh, best at what he does in Canada, I feel like. And I've seen a huge growth um, in my time working with him. And if I'm not working with him, the other four days, uh, me and my little brother, we go to the park. We do a bunch of ladder agility drills, plyometrics, um, and a little bit of conditioning. And then later on at night, um, obviously, you know, Michael Mattis, who just committed to SIU, his father has a, a warehouse, which I'm really thankful for them to allow me to use. He has a, he put up an indoor net um, and he's been training with Dustin McDaggart. Um, and he told me, he invited me and said, come, come try it out, see what you think. And I went and I really liked it. We've been working on a lot of skill work as well over there and just coming off curls, shooting off the dribble and just things like that. So it's, it's been, it's been really good. And just adjusting, it's been different though, adjusting um, with my schedule and stuff. Definitely, definitely. The, you touched uh, base, like you touched a bit upon Mike, a uh, former teammate of yours. Um, talk about, talk a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll take it a little bit back, like talk about your high school career. You know, you started in Oakville, um, then went over to London, um, and it seems like you still got a lot of love for your LBA guys. It seems like you guys are a tight-knit group. Uh, talk a little bit about the LBA family and a little bit about Coach uh, Angelo as well, and the, the different things you took from that situation. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, I started off in grade nine um, at Loyola. Um, the main reason why I chose to go to Loyola was because of how close it was uh, to my house. So I could go train in the morning at 6, 7 in the morning before school started as well. It, it was a historically really good program, and they were kind of on the downfall, so I want to come bring that back up. So I played grade 9 and 10, junior and senior, um, in grade 9, junior and senior in grade 10. And I had really good coaches there. Um, and obviously throughout my high school career, as you know, my dad, he brought me all over uh, America to different showcases, different camps. And I really made a name for myself um, in various camps. I was rated best shooter. And, and that really brought me confidence. And then um, obviously in the summer, grade 10, going to grade 11, I feel like it was the most important summer for me. And that was the year, the summer before I went to LBA, um, playing EYBL 15U um, for the first time. I felt like, you know, I didn't have a, as big of a, of a role as I should have. And that's kind of when I really started realizing, you know, I should start playing over this person and that person. And I kind of put a chip on my shoulder for that whole summer. Um, and it really uh, pushed me to work even harder. And uh, at that point, no one really knew me still. Um, other than you, 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 were, you along with North Hopes were the first, first ones to really kind of take notice of my talent, 
um, and really believe in me and see something in myself that me and my dad always knew I had. Um, so I've been really thankful for that. And end of the summer, I went to North Pole Hoops Camp um, and I played really well there. And I, I felt like I made a name for myself. And then Coach Angel, he, he walked up to my dad and he said, I really like his game. Um, you know, I, I want to start recruiting him for next year and hopefully we can have him come. Um, and a week later, we were on vacation in Florida. And it's, it's funny because Coach Angel called us. He said, um, uh, where, are you guys, where are you guys at right now? And, and we said, we're in Florida. He said, oh, I'm here too. I would like to train Okai. And my dad says, oh, that's good because Okai, he already goes to the gym. Um, takes, he takes the bus to the gym to go to the local LA Fitness. Uh, that's like 10, 15 minutes away from the resort. He's like, so you, you, could, you could join um, one morning. So at 7 in the morning, I think it was like a Friday, Coach Angel came. Uh, I trained with him. It was all really good. Uh, I liked what the drills he did, how specific he was, how structured the workout was. Um, but the thing that really sold me and made me think, you know, I, this is where I want to go was when he told me, okay, if, if you wake me up at six in the morning, every morning, I promise you, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to train you. I was like, okay, yep, this, this is where I want to go. So I ended up attending LBA in grade 11 um, and obviously grade 12 as well. And those were some of the best years of my life. You know, it was really a family bond. Uh, Judy, I referred to as like my second mom, uh, her along with uh, coach Judy, you know, Alyssa, their daughter and Michael, their son. It's like a whole family. Um, and aside from that, I play with great players as well. You know, we're all one big family. Once you're a part of the LBA family, you always be a part of it for the rest of your life. Um, the players that went D1, CIS, various levels, they're all doing big things. Obviously with Michael, one individual, and that's like, he's like a brother to me. So I keep in contact with him a lot. Um, obviously, I talk to Coach Andrew every day. And they also have another big player coming up, uh, Tiki Ali Atiki. He's yeah. going to do – so I'm really excited to see what LBA does moving forward um, and, the, and the players they have coming up. Yeah, so then going from LBA, um, talk about the, the offers you had and uh, your uh, decision to take uh, a redshirt season. Talk about, like, if anyone knows you, um, they know how bad you want to be on the court. Talk about that redshirt season. Talk about what your role was and also how it helped you build character. Uh, well, so I had, I had a, a lot of looks, a lot of offers from various schools. Um, a lot of schools recruited me. You know, I had high major looks as well. Um, but for me and my family, even, even with LBA, people said, oh, well, why is he going to LBA like a small school? It, it was always about the fit and how I felt about it, about the coaching staff, the family environment. And same with, with Drake. You know, I, I didn't worry about a high major, mid major, none of that. It was the relationship I built with all the coaching staff, obviously with Coach DeVries having NBA level uh, pedigree, like coaching uh, various NBA players, um, Coach Bunt, the Canadian connection, you know, he um, always checking up on me. So I really felt comfortable and put my trust in the coaches. So that really led me to commit to Drake. And as far as uh, reclassifying, I felt like, you know, no matter how many resources a high school or prep school could have, it can never beat out playing against high level D1 competition every single day. Um, so I decided to classify and I went to Drake as a 17 year old. And I was pretty much 17 for half of the year. Um, so obviously I wasn't physically mature as the rest of the players were, you know, 22, 23 year old. Um, so I decided to redshirt, just work on my body. And that was a huge thing for me because I came in weighing 160 pounds. And right now I'm at around 185, 190. So I feel like at weight wise now I'm at that level. Um, and I'm still looking to get stronger and stuff, but that really helped me. Um, but aside from that, the red shirt season, it was so beneficial for my development. If I were to do it again, I would do the same exact thing, you know, go there, red shirt a year early. Um, just because I was able to learn our system, what our head coach, Coach DeVries likes, uh, um, the plays we do, both our, our players' uh, strength and weaknesses. Also, I got so on the scout team, we play against our starting five every single day. Um, and we run through the other team's um, various plays. So I got to learn the other team's system um, in, inside out. So I know what they like to do for when I get on the court next year. Uh, and I got to play the point guard position a little bit on scout, you know, got to play the other team's best player, best point guard, shooting guard. So I got to showcase not only my shooting ability, but also my playmaking for myself and others and just being able to handle the ball, come off pick and rolls. So I felt like that was really beneficial for me. And it was just a fun year, you know, being, being able to travel with the team, go to games, obviously all the games, practice, and, and just see the different arenas. I'll be playing that next year in the environment of the B1 level. It was definitely a great experience. So with that, like encompassing everything that you're talking about with the scout team and the practices and, you know, uh, going through the season, for a kid watching this that, you know, aspires to play NCAA, 
what what was the NCAA season like? Like, what are some things that some knowledge and wisdom that you can uh, give to these kids uh, or anyone watching that hasn't really experienced it? What are some of the takeaways that you got during your uh, red shirt season that was really like a freshman season that you're you're going to implement now going forward? What's the journey like? Um, it's definitely very humbling. You know, you coming from high school where you're one of the top players on your team. Um, you could go to practice, you know, just dominate um, regardless of, you know, if you're sore or this, that. But when you go to college, you got to be – every single practice, you have to come in and, and work hard and be prepared and bring your best. Because if you don't bring your best, you're, you're going to get exposed. Um, so that was the main thing. And the playing games, you have to also keep in mind, you're the best player in your high school team. Well, there's 15 other guys on that team who were the best player on their high school team. Um, so you're playing against really high-level competition. Um, but for me, like coming as a, as a freshman – I just want to pick the older guys' brains, the coaches' brains, because, you know, they know so much that I still have to learn. Um, so that was just a huge experience for me. And just work hard. You know, there's a lot of distractions that you may have in college. Um, you just have to block it out, have tunnel vision, and and just keep working you know, and stay focused. With the journey in college, how did you find the academics uh, along with the athletics? It's, it's, it's a challenging academic schedule that you have as well right you you're like for the for the you know common person kind of explain the NCAA schedule like what does your day look like um obviously uh so Drake's Drake's a high academic school um people may not know that but it's a really high academic school so we take my family especially we take academics very seriously uh Drake the coaching staff academic advisors take it very seriously so that's a main thing um but my day it pretty much it starts around if I, have a, if I have a morning class, I'll go to the morning class. Um, if I don't have a morning class, I'll go to the gym, shoot. Um, and after that, it's pretty much class, class, class. I'll have lunch. And then we have either weights first or practice first, and then just switch it up. If we have practice, then we have weights after. And we do that. So we're probably in the facility for three, four hours in that practice block. Um, and then you have to get treatment, stretch, and all that. And I usually just go get dinner, and I come back. I come back. Uh, right after and I just train keep training out of the student manager um keep I just train with them um and another thing we do is we have study hall so we need I've got the hours off the top of my head but I think it's I think it's 10 maybe or seven hours a week so we have to go fulfill those requirements and that really helped me a lot because I'm a really good student but with the hectic schedule especially uh freshman year that help and that guidance is very important and allowed me to finish with a 4.0 this semester and a 3.75 overall. So I finished um, with a really high GPA um, and, and the guidance was really beneficial for me. So you touched on two things. You touched on your role at LBA, which was a big role. Then you touched on your role at Drake this year, which you said was kind of a humbling role. You get humbled. Um, taking those two experiences now, what is the biggest takeaway for next season? For next season, uh, it's just, well, from LBA being being uh, the best player on the team, or one of the best players on the team, and a, a focal point of other teams' defense and a focal point of our offense, um, it's just, you know, if, if I'm in that position, I'm best be uh, in that position next year, then I can come in and I'm already used to that, you know, uh, double teams, um, beating all that, rising up to the challenge. But at the same time, also just staying humble, um, picking everyone's brain, and, and knowing that, no, I'm still 18. I'm still the youngest on the, on the team. And there's still people like coaches, players who know so much more than I do and just picking their brain and working hard every day. So with that uh, uh, vision of next season, um, what, what kind of position do you, do you envision yourself playing at the next level? Uh, at the next level, I feel like I'm a combo guy. Um, obviously, everyone knows me as a, a really good shooter. Um, but I feel like I could, more than just a stand in the corner – and catch catch the ball if they pass you and shoot it. I feel like if the coach needs me to do that, I'll do that. Whatever the coach needs me to do, whether it be um, stand the corner, shoot it, come off curls, shoot it, um, come off picks, play make for others, play make for myself. Whatever the coach needs me to do, play position one, two, three. I feel like I could do. And then with people, you know, saying, or 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 you building such a good reputation as a shooter, what are some of the big development points that you're? trying to really iron out in your game this summer or even with your red shirt season as well. Yeah. Obviously I'm still trying to uh, 
focus on on getting my body stronger, getting faster, more athletic, um, and adding some size, adding a little bit of weight. Uh, but aside from that, obviously I'm working on all my whole game, but really just trying to focus on defense, the different terminologies, getting even more acclimated with it, the rotations. Um, and we have a, we have a really good defensive coach, Coach Matt Woodley. He coached in the G League, uh, various high major schools. He coached guys like Clay Thompson and a bunch of NBA players. So he's really good on the defensive side. Um, and I've just been picking his brain and, and learning from him as well as the rest of the coaching staff and, and trying to watch a lot of film on our players and the other team uh, players that we'll be seeing so I can know what to do defensively and offensively. And now, like, thinking about uh, your, your journey so far, and you've still got such a long way to go, what, what motivates Okai? What, what is the motivating factor behind uh, you, you and your basketball journey? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. It's just my love for the game and my passion for the game. It's never been about, you know, the, the, the fame or how many followers on Instagram or how much money I could make if I could go to the NBA. It's just, it's just my love for the game, and that's pretty much it. It's, it's all it's ever been. Now, with those other things, there are, uh, like, like you said, like the fame and the Instagram and the money and all the other things. There's also the critics. Mm -hmm. And being a small town kid, I mean, you're from Oakville, which isn't, they still put you down as Toronto, but you're, you're from Oakville. But um, mm -hmm. being that small town kid, you've, you've listened to what the critics have to say about your game. Um, do you think that it's been fair criticism? Do you think that you're overlooked? Do you think that, uh, there's any truth to all of it. Like, how do you feel about it? Uh, whether it's fair or not, it doesn't really matter to me, to be quite honest with you. Um, obviously, I've been having to deal with it ever since I was 15 years old. Um, when it first started happening, you know, it was like, kind of like, I was thinking, why is it happening? But then it just really started bringing a fire inside of me. Like, you know, I'm going to step on their throats, whoever. Oh, he said he's better than me? Okay, I'm going to go at him. Oh, he said he's better than me. He's ranked, he should be ranked ahead of me? Okay, I'm going to go at him. And that's really when I started, you know, when I got to LBA grade 11 that year, when I was 15 years old, I started working even harder and just trying to show to everybody. Um, and whenever someone says something, let's say they said, oh, he's not dunking. Anymore. Okay, I started dunking. You know what I mean? Well, he can't do a windmill. Okay, I, I did a windmill. What's next? You know what I mean? So all these things, whether it's true or not, I, I wanted to prove that it's not going to be true uh, the next time I play. So that's just been my mentality. And I feel like it really helped me because I got – the other team's best players, best games. So I got to play at the highest level at all times. As you work harder and as you continue to, you know, reach new levels, I want to just ask you a couple different things. Who, who do you mold your game after? So in terms of shooting, who's, who's those shooters out there that you try to mold your uh, game after? Um, well, obviously, a lot of people com compare me to uh, Clay Thompson. They say I look like him, too. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that part. But aside from that, you know, his shooting, um, it's really good to see that, you know, he's really efficient with it. Um, takes one, two, he had 60-something points with only 11 dribbles. Um, and that's something really a takeaway for me is he doesn't exert that much energy on the offensive side, which leads to him being able to expend all, all his energy on the defensive side. So, so just trying to be efficient with my game, find my shots in the most efficient way possible. Um, and another player is J.J. Redick. Um, I used to think – I used to brush that one off and be like, you know, he's just a stand corner – type guy but I realized he's not like I watched his uh, game film with my coaches and you know I do come off screens come off picks curl get to the basket floaters um and do all everything and you know he I was wrong about him being just a standstill in the corner type guy and he's around six four six five he's not a freak athlete so he's pretty much what my body composition is like so those are two players that I try to take away from them all in regards to shooting and then talking about uh, kind of being that uh, combo guard. Who who are the players that you look at in the pick and roll game? Who are some of the guys that you study with the ball in their hand in the pick and roll game? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, there's a lot of um, great guys. You know, Bradley Beal, he's that combo position. Um, so I try to watch what he does. You know, he's a really good shooter as well. That's something a lot of people don't know. He's really good off picks. So I try to watch him off the pick and roll. And also the ones who are really good on the pick and roll, like Chris Paul. You know, he's a pure point guard. So you could always learn from a guy like Chris Paul coming off picks and whatnot. And another guy, um, Coach Angel, one of his favorite players, his son's favorite, but Michael Provenzano's favorite player is Steve Nash. So they would always take us through drills and that was what Steve Nash would do. You know, different types of shots, him being undersized, 6'1", six, 6'2", six, white Canadian guard. You know, he got his shots against the best athletes in the world. So trying to take away from guys like that. 
Bradley Beal's underrated for sure, especially in the pick and roll game. That's a good one. I didn't even think of that. Defensively, who who are guys that you look at defensively, and I mean, just want to kind of embody their defensive spirit? Who are guys that you look at and say, "I want to be a dog like that guy"? Uh, definitely Clay Thompson. Um, he he's a really good defender. People don't know that, and the reason why I say you know he, he's very efficient. On the offense side, that's I feel like that's part of the reason why he's being able to be such a good defender as well. And defense is really about working hard. Um, aside from the, you know, you don't really need to have skill to play defense, and that's something that I've been trying to take away and just go hard every possession and just work on that. Now, in in terms of what uh, like for the combo guard, what do you think are the most important uh, skills for that position? Um, I feel like one of the most important ones. Um, is shooting, just be able to keep the defense honest. Because if you can't shoot, they're going to play off you, and that's going to take away from you being able to make plays for others. And that's the second part, making plays for others. Because as a combo guard, you have to have, find, like, a balance between when to score and when to when to distribute to others. So I feel like that, along with being able to handle the ball and, and make good reads off the pick and roll, and that's something I've been focused on, just handling the ball and trying to make proper reads off the pick and roll. So with all of that being said, um... When, when did you know you wanted to pursue basketball? When was the moment where you were like, this is for me? Um, pretty much as, as long as I can remember. Um, my dad tells me it's since I was two years old, which is my first picture of the basketball. So I, I always go with that. I guess you could say two years. I don't remember that, but that's what I've been told. So I, I've been playing for 16 years now. So. Awesome. And a uh, couple more questions. Um, when... When people see you play, no one. If if we we brought someone in that's never seen you play, and they they watch you, you know, for the full game, what do you want that person leaving uh, to to say about you? What 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 is something that you really pride yourself in? Well, obviously, I want them to come in and say that's one of the best shooters I've seen. I want them to come uh, and say that. I want them to say, you know, he works really hard. He listens to the coach. You know, he's really coachable. He's a great teammate. He makes others around him better. Um, and aside from that, I want it to be exciting. You know, fans come to watch exciting basketball, and I want them to leave the game happy and say, I want to go watch Okai Jamie's play next, next time. So that's pretty much what I want fans to uh, think when they watch me play. And then when, last thing, when you talk about, um, you know, being a great teammate, what are the things that you think uh, you can bring to any team anywhere? Um, how, how, how are you a great teammate? Um, in terms of being you know, I'm always positive, you know, I'm also, also, you know, pushing people, um, not just, you know, oh, good job this, you know, you could have done this better, or, you know, I, sh- I have to work on this. Um, and aside from that, just working hard, I mean, just working hard and bring that, that culture of just, you know, come, come work out with me today. You know, let's wake up in the morning before we doing, let's stay focused and just trying to keep people focused and, and just working hard. Well, that's awesome. And, uh, Appreciate your time, Okai. Appreciate you doing this. Go ahead, uh, sign off. Uh, if you want to leave anyone with a message, uh, you want to shout anyone out, yeah, go ahead. This is your time. Just, I'm going to keep working. Um, I'm going to prove people wrong and prove my people that have been with me, like you, try to prove them right as, as, along with my family. And that's pretty much it. Just put my head down and keep working. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okai Jangoose, Drake Basketball. Uh, Good luck with the rest of the uh, summer, and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it.